Namaste, and welcome to another episode of Uludu Narpadu. And today we're going to start a series of verses about actually how to realize God. God realization or self realization mean the same thing. And the meaning of this is very difficult to get across to someone who has never gone beyond the mind, beyond the ego, the small self, the conditioned self. In fact, it's impossible. <laughs> Why is that? Well, as Ramana says, are there two selves? <laughs> who is going to see the self? There's only one self and it can't see itself. So the only way to see the self is to be the self. We're going to enlarge on that after we read the verse. If it is asked, what is the truth of the many scriptures which speak of oneself seeing oneself, whom one thinks to be an individual soul and seeing God? The reply will be as follows. Since oneself, the first person feeling I, is one and not two, how is one to see oneself? Then if it is impossible for one to see oneself, how is one to see God, who is the substratum or reality of oneself? to become a prey to God, who is the real self, is seeing God. You know, uh, my devotion, my, the ter term is Ishta Devata, huh? the uh, ideal form of God that one keeps within one's heart is Narasimha Deva. Here's a picture. So Narasimha Deva is a form of half man, half lion. And so <laughs> this uh, verse is completely understandable, clear, <laughs> and real to me. Because God is like a lion. He is like a uh, Hungry cat. <laughs> Have you ever watched a hungry cat stalk its prey? Very carefully, sneaking up, waiting very still until just the right moment to pounce. <laughs> Sneaky cat. Huh? So, <laughs> this is totally real to me. Um, in the beginning of spiritual life, we can't see anything. I was talking with one Swami the other day, and we were laughing about this. <laughs> How when we first started meditating, looking inside, all we see is black, nothing. Huh? And we were laughing and laughing about this. Because, of course, in our present state, <laughs> We see the opposite. We see nothing but light. Huh? Too much light. <laughs> like thousands of suns. Yeah? But because one is the self, even though there are thousands of suns in the Brahman, their light is like the moon, cooling, pleasant, soft. So, <laughs> this Brahman, this, this self, according to Ribhu Gita, is amiable. Huh? He's very friendly. He likes to be close to his devotee. He likes to be involved with his devotee's life very intimately, in tremendous detail. He doesn't miss anything. Huh? He's super aware of everything. 
And so the reciprocation with him in the mood of love is very, very satisfying. This is bhakti. Now, in higher stages, one realizes one's identity with God. That is, the ego, the world, and God come into being simultaneously. Why? Because the ego is a separation from the self, making a separate self, an individual self, apart from the whole, Brahman. So this introduces the principle of duality. And again, to quote Ribu Gita, once you have a little duality, <laughs> you have the whole package. <laughs> There's no such thing as a little duality. <laughs> Once you admit to duality, then the whole world exists and all of its parts and all its phenomena, time, space, distance, motion, all kinds of phenomena. And also God has to exist because there has to be a creator, there has to be a controller, and there has to be a knower of the whole thing. Because our individual consciousness is very tiny. Huh? Our knowledge, at least we think, you know, in individual consciousness, that our knowledge is very small, very limited and imperfect. And indeed it is, as long as we have this duality. So Bhagwan, Ramana here, advises us to become the prey of the self. And he tells a, a story with that. And once there was a man who heard about an old tiger living in a cave. And he decided to go and try to find it. So he inquired from the village people, where is this cave? And he went and searched it out. And at first, waiting outside the cave, he was afraid. And he said, oh my goodness, what if this tiger gets me? Right? But the, the tiger was so old that it couldn't come out of the cave. It would just wait there for others to come in. <laughs> so eventually the man got up his courage and he said, well, I can go in there and see him and escape because I know he can't come out. So he went in the cave and at first he couldn't see anything. <laughs> and gradually he went deeper and deeper in the cave. He still couldn't see. And finally, he got close enough, and the tiger jumped on him and ate him up. <laughs> so this is how <laughs> this is how we realize the self. Metaphorically, the cave, of course, represents meditation, and the tiger represents the self. Well, I prefer lion, so let's use the lion example. So. To go into meditation, at first, one is afraid. Oh, what if I lose control? What if I lose myself? Uh, what if I lose my identity, my individuality, or control over my life, or whatever? But then, after seeing so many examples of great sages who went into meditation and were successful, and hopefully including one's own guru, then one enters the cave very slowly, looking and looking, but where is this self? But he can't see. His eyes aren't adapted to the dark in the cave. He thinks there's nothing there. It's just blank, empty. But then, as he gets a certain amount of uh, distance into the cave, he comes within range, <laughs> and the self pounces on him and gets him. And after that, there's no escape. So Bhagwan here is saying, make yourself the prey of the self. Put yourself in a position where he can get you. <laughs> because you can't do it. You can't do it by yourself. This self, this individual who you think you are, cannot enter into those realms 
the realm of non-duality. Huh? It's not oneness, by the way. It's non-duality. Let's get that straight right off the bat. We're not to, trying to become one with the self because that's impossible. <laughs> the ego has to go away. It has to be shed. It has to be killed, lost, or somehow done away with. And of course, the mind cannot overcome the mind. The mind cannot overcome itself. So we approach the self and allow the self to overcome the mind. How is that possible? Because the self is pure bliss. Pure awareness. Huh? There is no division within the self. There is no boundary. There is no edge or end to the self. It's unbounded, infinite. There's no end to it. So because this uh, condition of being self is non-dual, there's no difference between the small self and the big self. But in ego consciousness, we think there is. So until we give up this ego, the mind that it's based on, and the principle of duality at the root, we can't realize the self. We can't even understand it. It's not possible to understand. But we can point some fingers. We can say it's absolute, non-dual, objectless awareness, and so on. But these are just indications. Without the actual experience of the self, they're meaningless. So in other words, not that one becomes the self. There are several misunderstandings concerning self-realization. That one becomes the self. No, you can't become something that you already are. Or that we create the self by meditation. And again, we can't create something that we already are. Or that we attain or uh, procure or get the self. No, <laughs> we, we can't get it because we are the self. So if we already are the self, then we can't purify the mind or the ego to become the self. So that's not a valid concept either. Nor is self-realization a matter of any practice. Well then, why do all the gurus and scriptures recommend different practices for attainment of the self? Well, actually it's a trick, you see. <laughs> it's a trick to get you in the cave. <laughs> Once you're in the cave, eventually you'll come within range and the self will strike and get you. But really all we have to do is take away the coverings, uh, the upadis, the vasanas, the superimpositions that we have created on, on the self and the mental tendencies, the habits that we've developed to uh, cover up the self. And that is the purpose of sadhana. And we'll talk more about sadhana in the next episodes. Om Tatsa Om Harihi Om. <laughs>